Our Commandrite Mehli Kladikyan, General Vicar of the Armenian Prelate of Canada. Very Reverend Archpriest Gomidas Panosyan, Pastor of St. Mary Armenian Apostolic Church. Members of the Board of Trustees and dear guests. It is an honor and privilege to be here today because today we are facing our history through those Sister of Mercy, Sister of Love, and Sister of Protecting, who lived and served our people before, during, and after the Armenian Genocide. Today we are facing our history, but with honor and joy, honor of our hearts and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Christians, we do not just believe in God, but we live in God. This is the mystery of our resurrection as people after the genocide. For us, mercy is a gift from God. If we all have merciful hearts, it means that we are in God and God is in us. For this reason, in our service that we had tonight, we pray to God by saying, O oh, rightful judge, when you come with the glory of the Father to judge the living and the dead, do not sit in the judgment of me, your servant, but save me from the eternal fire and make me also hear your blessed voice when you call our righteous ones to enter into your heavenly kingdom. Have mercy on your creatures, and especially on me, a great sinner. More than a hundred years ago, the mercy of God was upon the faithful nurses. Heavenly mercy became devotion. <coughs> heavenly mercy shined like the grace of God. Heavenly mercy transferred to helpful and lovely hearts. Heavenly mercy signed in our hearts as a gift from God. Tonight, we are honored to have among us a lady with a lovely heart and shiny spirit, Isabel Capielian Churchill. Dear lady, under the mercy of God and the auspices of the Virgin Mary in this church, we just have one word to introduce to you as a faith, faithful Armenian, proud Armenian, and a lady who built her life on a rock, the strongest rock, who is our Lord, Jesus Christ. And that one single word who can express our heart's feeling is we are grateful and thankful. And as an opening remark, I would like to read some verses from the Holy Bible, which is our way, truth, and life. Please follow my reading from your program on page two. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to the test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied. How do you read it? He answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, 
And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, the Levite, when he came to the place and saw where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two <coughs> denarii and gave him to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of the, these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands <coughs> of the robbers? The expert in law replied, The one who had mercy on him, Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. <coughs> and now, I would like to invite Miss Tala Nelsesian to sing an English song, You Raise Me Up. After her graduation, she attended American University in Beirut, Lebanon, and immigrated to U.S. and continued her studies in Boston and in Toronto. She is a devoted member of our church. And now, with honor and privilege, I would like to invite 
Dr. Sonia Sarkisian to present us Dr. Isabel's new published book, Sisters of Mercy and Survival. Sireli Yev Harkeli, Hurel Yev Merganev. I saw the Hoskes Vidilla and Clareno, Pites Anor, Hiren Lesvo, Ampo Puma, Hajitsek Desnel, Zerurensatz Haida Clean Match, H. Ina, Shraga Lutman. Achimandrik Father Mevrik Parikian, Reverend Father Gomidas Panosian, Dear board members of the St. Mary Armenian Apostolic Church and dear guests. Dr. Isabel Capelian Churchill is the author of the book Sisters of Mercy and Survival, Armenian Nurses. The book consists of close to 530 pages, including 12 chapters and multiple photographs organized in 13 separate sections. The purpose of the book is to focus on Armenian nurses in the Ottoman Empire, Armenia, the Middle East, and Greece before, during, and after the Armenian Genocide, during the period 1900 to 1930, reflecting on how these nurses laid the foundation of modern nursing, public health, and midwifery, in these regions. The book was published in 2012 by the Armenian Catholicos of Cilicia, printing house in Antilias, Beirut, Lebanon, and was funded by the Richard and Tina Caroline Literary Fund. The printing house, which was established in 1931, continues to be an integ integral part of the Catholic set and plays an important part in the culture and educational spheres of the church. Recently, on March 16, 2014, His Holiness Aram I inaugurated the 35th Book Fair in Beirut, Lebanon. In his message, His Holiness stated that the Armenian book sustains our national existence and continues to nurture our lives through spiritual and intellectual enrichment and growth. Close the quotation. Sisters of Mercy and Survival is yet another in a long list of publications which beautifully testifies to the important role that the Armenian Catholic set of the House of Cilicia has played in the past, during and after the Armenian Genocide, when besides its mission of faith, was instrumental in the fields of religion, education, and social services, and also in the modern times, when the scope of the Catholic set's multifaceted role and services have broadened and particularly in the fields of Christian and Armenian education, interreligious relations and the youth, in addition to encouraging and supporting the documentation, publication and the preservation of Armenian history. The author Sisters of Mercy and Survival has successfully increase the significance of the content of this book through a thorough literature review, extensive research, and a detailed account of the sources used. She was able to support the well-structured text of the book through the use of multiple photographs, which include a glimpse of Armenian life before the genocide, and is followed by the hospitals, clinics, organizations, and orphanages that develop during and after the genocide. The author explains her intention for the use of these photographs in stating at the beginning of the book that, quote, 
The main text and the photographs are each to stand alone. They are of equal importance, related but separate, which in themselves can form a photographic album telling their own narrative. Close the quotation. The photographs were of special interest to me, both as a book reviewer and as the daughter of an orphan who survived the Armenian genocide, which I will address later in this talk. Dr. Caprielian Churchill explains in the broad perspective section of the book that her inspiration for researching this topic was a picture of a group of Armenian nurses taken in 1921 at the Enirigs Memorial Hospital in Azira, <coughs> near Harper, Turkey. While working at the Hoover Institute archives at Stanford University, she unexpectedly came across the name of a physician, Dr. Ruth Azni Parmali, whose archives contained this picture of the Armenian nurses. The author states early in her book that these young women remained in her mind and, quote, would not budge until they could be heard. I have endeavored to give them a voice and to acknowledge their contributions to the survival of a nation. Indeed, through this review and analysis of Sisters of Mercy and Survival, I would like to ensure the author that, yes, she was able to give a voice to these Armenian nurses. Those women were very instrumental in the history and the survival of the Armenian orphans, the Armenian nation, and the nursing profession. Although the contribution of <coughs> Armenian male physicians and pharmacists was not the main topic of the author. She made important references to them. As members of the healthcare team, they also played an important role in the history and medical care in the Ottoman Empire. Although it is sometimes considered essential in a book review to summarize the various chapters, events, or specific sections, I have chosen a different approach. Rather, I will try to present an overall analysis of this book through evaluating it for its purpose and meaning, content and thoroughness, and for the quality and significance of its subject matter, focusing on the following three themes which it explores. Number one, historical perspective. Its importance in Armenian history and the nursing profession. Number two, the role of North American and Western educated healthcare professionals and other organizations in the training of Armenian nurses. And three, the role of Armenian nurses in the nursing profession and the care of the orphans. First theme, historical perspective. Sisters of Mercy and Survival is a historical study that focuses on Armenian nurses in the Ottoman Empire, Armenia, Middle East, Greece, in the late 19th and the early 20th century. It demonstrates how Armenian nurses contributed to the foundations of modern nursing. In transforming the history and the role of Armenian women at that time in the fields of medicine, nursing, and public health, the author portrays these women as the pioneers and change agents that they became in the profession of modern nursing. As a historian, Dr. Caprielian Churchill was successful in examining, quote, the training and work patterns of Armenian girls during the birth of the nursing profession and placing Western-style nursing in the framework 
of Armenian history. The author sets the historical framework through the use of documents from more than 15 archives in North America, Europe, Armenia, and the Middle East, as well as various other sources in English, French, Armenian, Turkish, and Russian languages. <coughs> These are all supported by numerous photographs of nurses, doctors, hospitals, orphanages, and organizations. It is also necessary to mention that the occasional repetition of information that we read in this book can, can be considered as being unavoidable by some due to the multiple archives and to the variety of different sources included by the author. Sisters of Mercy and Survival studies the training, practice, and contributions of Armenian nurses and places these experiences within the framework of the great events that shook the world during the genocide. It was very interesting to learn through her research that, quote, in Turkish accounts of nursing in the Ottoman Empire, there was little or no mention of the pioneer work of Armenian women who were being trained in Antap, Turkey in 1893. The main text of this book examines the work of Armenian women in laying the foundations of modern nursing in the Ottoman Empire and its neighboring countries. This occurred at almost the same time as hospitals and professional nurse training facilities were being set up in North America, and specifically in cities such as Toronto, New York, and Boston. By addressing the work of these nurses in the fields of nursing, public health, and midwifery, <coughs> In addition to the various challenges in treating the contagious diseases during and following the war and the genocide, the book also reflects the empowerment of women in the medical profession and the leadership role that placed the Armenian nurses at the forefront of overall medical profession in the region. Dr. Caprielian Churchill mentions that, quote, not only did nursing become an appropriate profession for Armenian girls, but it also empowered them, gave, gave them a certain status in the community, and generated a measure of respect. Nursing gave their lives structure, enabled them to take some control over their future, and taught them self-discipline, all of which served them well during a period when family and community rules, regulations, and supports had crumbled. Thus, the, the book Sisters of Mercy and Survival, in addition to its role in reflecting the medical and nursing history at that time, also makes an important contribution to the social and cultural history of Armenians. <laughs> Second theme, the role of North American and Western educated health professionals and other organizations in the training of Armenian nurses. Research conducted in the Sisters of Mercy and Survival indicates that, quote, during and after the Armenian Genocide, the relationship between orphans and nursing was intensified. The Armenian health facilities and health personnel were swept away during deportation, a time when the care for the sick was critical. Dr. Kaprielian Church's research indicates that the North American and Western educated healthcare professionals, quote, entered the world of Armenian women, taught them, guided them, and in the end, exercised a profound influence on them through nurse training programs.
She continues that doctors like Ruth Asni Family, <coughs> Mabel Elliott, and Caroline Hamilton, and nurses like Mabel Power and Laura McFedridge were caught more than symbols of change, they were also agents of change. They enabled Armenian women to have access to modern nursing, pursue an education, realize their potentials, and increase their awareness of the nursing profession and its benefits to mankind. The courses included anatomy, physiology, bacteriology, obstetrics, and gynecology, and hygiene. The clinical training included bedside nursing, surgery, and midwifery. <coughs> In responding to the spread of malaria, cholera, typhoid, and trachoma, the program offered special training in tropical diseases focusing on prevention as well as in ophthalmology. In the early 1920s, in archives of Ramella Martin, called Out of Darkness, it is stated that, quote, Students were taught to deliver normal birth babies, assist the surgeon in the operating room, change dressings, remove sutures, give irrigations, catheterize patients, do gastric irrigation massage, <coughs> and give intravenous injections. The condition of the refugees and the orphans also forced the ongoing demand of many organizations, such as the Near East Relief and the American Women's Hospital. The Near East Relief and the American Women's Hospital established nurse training schools in order to meet the educational needs of nurses who would care for the sick and the devastated people following the Armenian Genocide. <coughs> These nurse training programs were modeled after the Bellevue Hospital in New York City. The Hoover's <coughs> Institutions, 1925, Near East Reliefs archives mentioned that, quote, English was used extensively in the hospital and the training school, and students received instruction in speaking, <coughs> reading, and writing English. Another instrumental role of the Near East Relief was the evacuation of close to 22,000 Armenian orphans from Turkey between 1920 and 1923. Dikranuhi Bonapartian, a 1913 graduate of Euphrates College, who worked in the orphanages, shares her thoughts of North American medical relief workers in 1922 as they gathered thousands of starving children from roads. Quote, the Americans placed the children on stretchers and sent them to orphanages. Day by day, those children improved. I remember hundreds who would have died had they not received immediate care through the North American medical relief workers. Armenian humanitarian organizations as well, such as the Armenian Red Cross, later called as Armenian Relief Society, and the Armenian General Benevolent Union, also raised funds in North America for medicine and clothing to meet the various needs of the orphans and the widows the sick and the wounded, and the survivors of the genocide. A 1921 report mentions that the Armenian Red Cross worked with the Near East Relief to run a tuberculosis hospital for children in Constantinople. This sanitarium was funded largely by donations from Canada, which Code was probably the first for children with tuberculosis in Turkey. 
In the development of early modern professional nursing in the region, Sisters of Mercy and Survival thus examines the role played by North American educated health professionals and organizations in the training of Armenian nurses during a critical period of their history. This important influence led many Armenian women survivors and orphans to pursue careers in nursing. Dr. Caprielian's research enables us to witness the Armenian nurses' knowledge, training, and experience in the early period of the 20th century. These young nurses came into contact with the medical and technological advances that were available at the time in Europe and the United States. The textbooks provided to them, the lectures attended, and the practical training provided by the North American Western Educated Healthcare Professionals quote, drew them into the sphere of the modern Western world. Third theme, the role of Armenian nurses in the nursing profession and the care of the orphans. Dr. Kaprielian Churchill indicates that the Armenian genocide fundamentally changed the traditional image of nursing. Nursing was initially considered as being so-called unsuitable for the respectable girls. However, through their commitment, compassion, and expertise, especially during and after World War I, the Armenian nurses became a major force in transforming this attitude to one that recognized nursing as a viable and important profession for females. During the war, they made great contributions in military hospitals and in caring for the injured soldiers. This was continued in clinics and hospitals for the survivors of the Armenian Genocide and subsequently in various orphanages. As mentioned by the author on page 479, the girls who entered nurse training programs were hand-picked because they were smart, conscientious, hardworking, competent, and morally upright, who themselves were usually orphans. In a letter to Kate Lamson of Women's Board in 1920, Dr. Ruth Azni Parmali, who was one of the driving forces in educating the Armenian nurses, stated that, the Armenian nurses, quote, will be pioneers in the nursing profession in their country. She was very well aware of the fact that the Armenian women contributed to the medical field even before World War I. These nurses extended their contribution by bringing modern nursing to Greece. In their turn, the Altunian Hospital in Aleppo and the American University Hospital in Beirut, Lebanon. The Armenian Red Cross and the Armenian General Benevolent Union also contributed to the teaching and training of nurses in Syria and Lebanon. The author explores how these Armenian heroes struggled in hospitals and orphanages with courage, warmth, and selfless dedication. They aided in the survival of a nation through an unexplainable devotion. They saved the lives of tens of thousands of orphans and refugees of the Armenian Genocide who were surrounded by death, hunger, epidemic, and deportation, and were on the brink of extinction. At the same time, these brave women contributed to the pioneering work of nursing and laying the foundations of modern nursing in the Ottoman Empire and its neighboring countries. In summary, the book Sisters of Mercy and Survival Armenian Nurses is an important step 
in unveiling the role of Armenian nurses as pioneers in the profession of nursing in the early 20th century. These women are part of both the history of Armenians and that of nursing. It was through their commitment as caregivers and agents of survival of a nation that they were able to pave the path and lay the foundations of nursing education and training through the encouragement and support of North American professionals and in turn to contribute to the profession of modern nursing. Personally, it was an honor and a great pleasure to accept Very Reverend Father Merik Parigian's request to present this book today. During my review and analysis, I came to realize my deep connection with the content of this book. It created a special interest in me, both as a nurse professional and as the daughter of an orphan who survived the Armenian Genocide. <coughs> Please allow me to present my personal reflections and to share my own feelings with you regarding this deep connection. First, I would like to express my admiration, respect, and sincere gratitude to all the courageous health professionals and the trained nurses who, in addition to laying the foundation of modern nursing, were also able to care for the sick and the orphans of the genocide, including my own father. Although I consider all Armenian and foreign healthcare professionals mentioned in this book as heroes and pioneers in the medical field, I would like to highlight my admiration for two people, Dr. Ruth Aznik Parmali and the nurse sister Sarah Saprichian as representatives of compassion and dedication provided by all the healthcare professionals. Dr. Ruth Parmali graduated as a medical doctor in the United States. She began her gynecological and obstetrical nursing training of young Armenian women in Kharpet, Turkey and continued it in, in Kokinia, Greece, following her exile in 1922. She even set up a number of outpatient clinics and provided sanctuary and public health to thousands of Greek and Armenian refugees. Sister Sarah Saprichian, who was planning to continue her nursing studies in Bellevue Hospital in New York, always remained by the side of Dr. Parmali and even followed her to Greece. She was the head nurse of a unit in charge of the delivery room and also taught student nurses in the first nurse training school in Salonika and Kokinia. These two remarkable women never hesitated in their dedication to serve those in need during the genocide, sometimes under very difficult conditions and made great contributions in nursing education. It is also worth mentioning that many of these nursing graduates from Turkey and Greece continued their education in North America and the Middle East. As to the multiple photographs of orphanages published in this book, I have to admit that I could not help looking at every single one of these orphans' eyes, faces, questioning if my father was in any of these pictures or which one of these orphans would resemble him as a child. My father, Kevan Puchikyan, a survival of the genocide, had even written his own memoirs about the various orphanages he experienced. These valuable memoirs were only found following his death and were published by us, his four children, in 2007, entitled The Caravan of Hope, 
The Journey of an Orphan of the Armenian Genocide, which was translated into English and in 2010 by permission into Spanish. Dr. Caprielian Churchill, in her description of the evacuation of thousands of orphans out of Kharkiv to Lebanon and Syria, state that, quote, many children were packed into carts or into baskets, hanging on either side of the mules and sent on their journey. I find it quite ironic that we can find a similar description in my father's memoirs when he states, quote, we are placed in small crates that are all arranged on the carriages and pulled by the mules. Furthermore, my father made reference to a nurse named Nurse Maritza who helped save him from the amputation of his infected leg by a Turkish doctor. <laughs> the encouragement, compassion, and love of the Armenian nurses towards the orphans is even evident in the following conversation with Nurse Maritza that he documented. Keram, I would not allow that Turk to amputate your leg. I already told him you can walk with difficulty. You have to help me prove him wrong. You can do it, one step at a time. I'll be right here, do not be afraid. My father had compared this Tur Turkish doctor to Hokeyar Hrishtak, the angel of death, and Nurse Maritza to his Bahaban Hrishtak, the guardian angel. He continued, quote, she also comes from Kharpirt and is one of the older orphans who was subjected to the same fate and has been trained to take care of patients in the American hospital. Dr. Caprielian ends her book as follows, quote, In spite of all personal anguish and their own insecurities, these young women with kindness and dedication played a decisive role in healing and consoling thousands of Armenian survivors. Like my father, I personally have no doubt that all the healthcare professionals, including the Armenian nurses who mentioned in this book, were perceived as guardian angels by every single one of these orphans. Orphans who had witnessed death were separated from their parents, deprived of their own childhood, moved from one orphanage to another, and ultimately on their way to survival. The author, through her extensive research of various archives, the multiple photographs and the sources used, succeeded in exploring the multi-dimensional contributions made by this exceptional generation of women. She accomplished this with objectivity, clarity, and with good writing style. Focusing on the role of Armenian nurses and the North American and Western trade healthcare professionals, she brought to life their contributions to the history of the Armenian nation and the nursing profession. This book, in addition to focusing on a medical profession, represents a valuable historical document. And I recommend its use as a source by both health providers and historians. Finally, Dr. Caprielian Churchill brings to light the fact that these Sisters of Mercy, as she calls them, or the Guardian Angels, as called by my father, made a lasting impression on the Armenian orphans during their dark days. These orphans kept alive their torches of compassion and the spirit of survival. These orphans made a deep commitment to contribute to their communities and or professions, always striving for excellence. 
and indeed succeeded in becoming role models to their own children, to us, the communities they served, and to the society in general. I believe that this, it is not a mere coincidence that this event today is taking place in the month of April when the genocide of a million and a half Armenians occurred 99, close to 100 years ago. Today, through the Armenian tradition of presentation of a book to life, we are also celebrating the lives of our ancestors, the survival of the orphans, our parents, and the dedication and sacrifices of all healthcare professionals at the time, both North American and Armenian, through our symbolic wine pouring ceremony, where grape represents the symbol of eternity and wine the symbol of life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sona Sarkisian. And now I would like to invite again Ms. Talar Nersesian to sing us a song dedicated to our most merciful and holy mothers, our Armenian mothers, which is called Kishel Tseleg. <laughs>
He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of some pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. <coughs> thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fleeth by the day, As, nor for the pestilence that walked in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most, most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil be for thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thou dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up upon in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall come upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. And now, I would like to invite Dr. Isabel Capriellian Churchill to address her message. I'd like to start in Armenian and then switch to English. Richard Yevtina Carolan Literary Fund for Pradaragucian Zalsa Hokatsin. Yevmanavan Kuzem Shrahagal Chun Haidnel Hajak Surpazanin. For I see Resundari Ver in Zimish Lav Ubuchun Dvadze. But I'd get Zad, if I'd get Abligarevor. Hi, Sir Gayun, if Uje Himatarate, Mirkana da Haim, Mirkana da Hai, Hamankin. If yes, for Stahem, if we soon name for Ice Kare Hima, Mer Abakan Amul Bidibahe. Semshna Hagal Chun Haidner, Haidner Ridin, Hokabar Tutian, if Pistonagan, Dasjara Ruchan Hans Napumpin, or Ice Shor Hantes Gasma Gerbetin. If I was in Shurhagal Chun Haidner, Dr. Sona, Puchikan Sarkishanin, or Girkis Verbutum Ra, Shat Keretsi, Shapinabri Keretsi. Zem Shragal Chun Haidner stay seen. Kunamasevor Arnavazan King Harur, the Gardner Scanerav, and Darpedra Archivner Mech, Yevyefor. Andretsi Yegu Harur Hissun Haad Kirkin Hamar, Stacey Nadong Polar Badrastets Dabak Rutyan Hamar. Isayem Vor Polar Nukahaskanak Yefor Semte Merce Aspan Rutyan Hamar Kirela Shab Chapenavadi Dejvare. 
Եվ այն խավար որերը և որ ծավով և արդունքով ուզվեի, ստեսին ինձի մխիտարեց, և միս կաճալերեց, որ պատականությունը սկադարեմ և իմ ասկի սպատմությունը բատմեմ, իմ գրծած չապով։ Եվ ձեր բոլորին աշնումը գալությում գուզեմ հայտնյավ, որ ներկա եկ այս շնորը հանտեսին։ I'd like to say a little bit in English. Dr. Fuchigyan Sarkisyan has done such a thorough job that there's very little for me to say, but I will, I would like to say a couple of things. Uh, some of you have expressed an interest in the research component, so I thought I might mention just a little bit about my, the very earliest uh, work that I did in, uh, in the start of this book. As she mentioned, I came across this photograph, which is on the cover of the book, quite unexpectedly at the Hoover Institution Archives at Stanford University. I was very taken by it, and I couldn't get it out of my mind. It was a picture of a group of Armenian nurses and their teachers sitting in front of the American hospital in Harper in 1921. Harper, of course, is a very ancient Armenian city, uh, part of Turkey today. A few months after that, I happened to be at a, at a dinner party in Fresno, and I mentioned my beautiful discovery. And the gentleman sitting next to me said, oh, my mother was a nurse in Harper after the war, and in fact, I have her diploma. Well, you can be sure I was at his door the next morning wanting to see that diploma and taking it for copy. He also mentioned that so-and-so's mother and so-and-so's mother was also uh, a nurse in Harper. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought it would be rather fun to write an article about these nurses. So I started to look for some background material, something about modern Armenian nursing. I found nothing, nothing. And by modern, I mean post Florence Nightingale, late 19th, early 20th century, when you know the, there was an emphasis on hospital cleanliness and uh, antiseptic treatments and uh, quality care. Now, I was very frustrated, and I thought, I, this can't be. This simply can't be that there's nothing. I must be missing something. Well, I knew that this hospital in Harper had been founded by an American Protestant medical missionary before 1914. So I thought I would start with the missionary records. Now, by the missionary records, I'm, I'm referring to the Congregationalist missionary records, because the Congregationalists had pretty well, as Suzanne Moranian has said, cornered the market in Turkey. There were, of course, French uh, Catholics, there were German Lutherans, there were Presbyterians and Baptists, but it was Congregationalists who were the real powerhouse in Turkey. The records of the, the, uh, the Congregationalist missionaries are at the Houghton Library at Harvard University. And it's a very rich, very extensive collection. It includes correspondence, uh, reports, accounts, photographs of every missionary for almost a pure, for, for almost a hundred years. So you can imagine how extensive it is. Luckily, they have they have been put on microfilm. 
So all I had to do was go to the Robarts Library, check out the uh, finding aids, and then order the reels that I wanted to read. And that's what I did. I started working on them, and I thought, oh, this is a nice little foray into being a little foray into the missionary archives changed uh, in a very short time. I found myself wanting more, reading more, and by the end of it, I had been going down to Robarts every day for several months. It was painstaking work, but the harvest that it yielded was spectacular. First of all, I found that Harvard wasn't the only hospital. There, were, there was a network of 10 Protestant mission hospitals in Turkey. Now, as these hospitals increased in number and size and patient load and types of treatment, they needed more and more nurses. At first, they recruited the nurses from abroad, mostly in the United States. But as they needed more nurses, there just wasn't enough. And so they decided that they would recruit the girls locally, and they would train them locally. And as uh, Dr. Pachik and Sarkisian said, they were very selective. They wanted moral, upright, educated, conscientious girls, dedicated to caring for others. Well, that presented two problems, serious problems. First of all, the recruitment base was very small. Why? Because they could recruit this kind of girl, an educated girl, really only among the Armenian population. Because the Armenians were the Armenian girls were the only ones who had benefited from the mass the the, the mass education. <coughs> now it's not to say that Turkish girls were not educated, but there were some who were educated, but they were largely in the urban areas. Whereas the Armenian girls were throughout towns, villages, they all had schools and they all opened their schools to Armenian girls. So these Armenian girls not only had an education, but many of them also had the basics of sanitation and hygiene. So first of all then, we have a small recruitment base. It's just among the Armenians. Secondly, parental opposition. Again, Dr. Fuchika and Sarkishan referred to that. It wasn't just the Armenians. I think it was probably generally believed that hospitals were not uh, places of healing, but a place better to die in than the streets. And as for nurses, they were only women, they were women of ill repute. And why would they have their, their well brought up daughters go into nursing, all that dirty work, caring for strangers, men at that? So they were not happy about their girls going into nursing. In fact, they blocked it. But Armenian girls faced this opposition <coughs> and gradually break, broke down barriers. How did they do that? Well, they were virtuous girls. They were upright. They were moral, decent young women. They were hardworking, very diligent and they transferred their own good character into their profession. So when we talk about nursing before Florence Nightingale in England, you know the reputation was not very good because the girls were not of high standing. These girls, the Armenian girls, were. And because they were honorable girls, they made the profession honorable. Let me say a little bit about nursing education. I 
found no consistency among these teaching hospitals uh, in the Ottoman Empire. It, it, it was, as far as I could tell, it was based primarily on the priorities of the uh, uh, head, head nurse or the matron. <clears throat> but there was one common denominator, and that was that they all had a link uh, with the American hospitals, particularly in, in the Northeast. And so uh, you see the linkage between Bellevue Hospital in New York City and the hospital in Eintal. Uh, they organized their curriculum based again on the American models, taking into consideration, of course, the local needs and the local uh, conditions. I found, it, I found it quite remarkable that Armenian student nurses were using much the same textbooks as their sisters, their professional sisters in, uh, in, in, the, in the United States. So they weren't that far behind. Moreover, I found that Armenian doctors who had gone to uh, had gone to specialize in the United States, particularly in ophthalmology, gynecology, and surgery, lectured to these girls, and in doing so, they um, they helped to hone their knowledge and their skills and their experience. And I'd like to mention one more critical trend. In the first decade of the 20th century, Armenian girls were venturing far from home to study the health sciences. It's very unusual because mostly it was men who went abroad or went away. Not girls, but it was starting to change. For example, <coughs> Osana Maksudia came from a very well-off family in Aleppo and she was <coughs> desperate to be a nurse and she wanted to go to, the, to attend the American <coughs> University of Beirut School of Nursing and her family was very opposed to her going but she did go alone. She traveled alone from Aleppo to Beirut and she enrolled in the, in the university and she was one of the first three to graduate in the School of Nursing. There were three girls, two of them were Armenian. At Marzavan Teaching Hospital, Lusaper Tarigian was sent to study midwifery in London. This was around 1908, 1910. In continuing on in Marzavan, the missionaries had organized a school for the hearing impaired. And they sent Arsha Luster Kalustin to England to study the, the newer methods, the latest methods of teaching uh, the hearing uh, impaired. And going further east to Urfa, the ancient Edessa, <coughs> the the uh, missionaries had established a school for the blind, and they sent young Mary Hadutunyan to England to study Braille, and she came back and brought the, her newfound knowledge with her. So all, I, I think it was very impressive, all of this, before 1914, in a backward country. Armenian nurses faced and overcame the opposition of family and society to helping care for strangers. They brought safe midwifery to urban and rural women, and they educated their patients about proper hygiene and sanitation. In doing all this, Armenian nurses were indeed pioneers in establishing modern nursing in the Ottoman Empire. And in the book, I, I trace that beyond 1914. 
I take it to, to the 1930, and as uh, uh, Dr. Fuchika and Sarkisian mentioned, they, they took their knowledge with them to the neighboring countries. So my odyssey with the nurses took me to 15 archives in eight different countries in five different languages. It was really a voyage of a lifetime. And I hope I have breathed new life into these forgotten young heroines. Thank you, Dr. Isabel Capia Young Churchill. And now I would like to invite our command right Memli Parikyan to give his clo the closing remarks and a prayer. Stacy, when Isabel was talking about you, yes, I remember because in me I make a part on When he was talking about you, she was uh, when she was talking about you, she was crying. I know why she was crying. And because she was crying for you, <laughs> I'm going to give you a present. Cufflinks with Armenian flag. Wow. And we are very honored to see you beside Isabel. God bless you and your family. You want to use this, huh? Always. Abris. Abris. Isabel Inamar. You cry for Isabel, yes? Excellent. <laughs> Bestaan voor Polora dal. Lesetsi Kiev, Merseli, Sonain en Isabelin, Hoskera, eigenlijk kim masien voor Isabelin padrastets. Als kierke je kerwets af. Met Christonegan kastera gulen Hans na hongo bidi hera dalagers. Եվ մենք արդեն որոշ աշխատանք մտարած էինք, բայց արիթովումը եվ իզաբելի մետ կխոս է, ես իզաբել ասքիրկը լավ գլավ որ խոշ չհրադարագվի, կատոլ գոսարան հրադարագվի, եվ առանդ ժամանակ կորսնցնելու թի մեծինք վեարպարին, Եվ որախ են, որ այս կիրկը հրադարագվեցավ։ Ես այս կիրկը երկու շատ բյորը ոտանավի մեջ դթերթադեի, երբ որ բերութ են գվերաթարնայի։ Եվ ամիջավես հիշեցի գարտացած ադելս մեր բատմության այն հին էչերը ու մեր մայրեր և նույն այս ոգիով, նույն այս սկսկունքով, նույն այս հապատքով իրենք զիրենք ընձայապերեցին մեր ժողովուրդին։ Մեր մայրերը կույրերը կսան էրոր թարո ասկիսպին միայն զարկացման հետամուտ չեղան։ Հինգերոր թարեն ասկսի կհավակեր աշակերտները և հաս ուդարանոնց։ Իսկ երբ այս հիվանդաբահու հիներու մասին գգարթայի հիշեցի մեր ժողովորդի պատմության մեծ աղթին թենքեր են մին զաբել թակուհին։ Գիլիգյո զաբել թակուհին, � ամեն ինչ ծկեք թակավորություն, թակ, իշխանություն, պարկ, բադիվ, իչապ ժողողութի մեջ և սկսավ նրսություն ըներ, հիվանդապա հուհի ըլլալ։ Հիվանդները խնամել, անոնց վերքերը սրպեն, մակրել։ Իշխանները 
ինքը գմնարակ հիվանդներ ու հետ այդ փորոդած փորոդ փորոդության հիվանդություն ունեցող մարդոց հետ անոնց վերքերը գլվա եւ գմակրես եւ ինձի համար որպես այ եկեցական եթե հարցնեն որ սրբության արժանի ով կա մեր ժողովուրդի պատմության մեջ ես առաջին անունը որ պիտի դամ զաբել թակուհին անունն է որ այս sisters of mercy հետ կերով 900 տարի առաջ նույն ճամփեն քալեց զարայկյան ճամփեն քալեց Եվ այն ցավը եւ այն դարաբանքը որ 100 տարի առաջ մեր ժողովուրդ ունեցավ եւ 100 տարի են առաջ 600 տարի մեր ժողովուրդ ունեցավ դարաբելով չարչարվելով զրկվելով դա գավին մենք այսօր ալ ունենանք այսօր ալ գավինք այսօր ալ նույն ցավին համար ուլանք կտակնապինք Փարեփախտ ապար դա գավին merciful հոգիներ կան մայրեր կան մեր մեջ քույրեր կան մեր մեջ որոնք մեր հայության ինքնության պահպանության համար իրենք զիրենք զոհափեր են ես այս քիշեր ուզեմ հարկանքի խոսք դածել բոլոր անոնց համար որոնք մեր քոյաբահպանման մեջ իրենց քիտագից հանձնարությունը թրած են ոչ թե սկացական հանձնարությունը քիտակից որովհետեւ քիտակից հանձնարություն է որ ասկ գերդ է արթարության սիրով եւ մանավանդ աշխատասիրության այս քիշեր ես կհավատամ որ մենք փոլոր մեր մայրերուն եւ քույրերուն հանդեպ մեր հարկանքը գտածենք որովհետեւ պատմության մեջ անոնք է գան ապրեցան զարգացած որպես գիներ ինչ պիսին է Սաբել Եսայանը ինչ պիսին է մեր փոլոր այն մյուս քրո գիները որոնք եթե երբեք թեոթիի ամեն ու դարեցույցը փանակ պիտի կարդակ այդ տեղ եւ հետա քրական էր որ քանի մար ամիս առաջ նայեք ստացա ես ամեն ամիս կստանա բայց քանի մա ամիս առաջ սուրփրգիչ բորսո հիվանդանոցի թերթը կստանա ձեզ մեկ կստանա երանի կստանա հոն եթե դեսնեիք հոնալ բիդի գարթայիք որ ինչպես 1915-ին առաջ սուրփրգիչ հիվանդանոցի մեջ հայ բժիշկ ուհիներ որ դեն էր սեր բժիշկ ուհիներ գային որոնք հիվանդներ խնամեին մեր ժողովուրդը միշտ զարգացման հետամուտ դեղած է եւ ուրախ են որ Իսաբելին ալ այս քիրքը ինչպես սոնանսավ նոր լույսը սփրե մեր ասող հայուր դարվան պատմության վրա մանավան անոր սկսնական շրջանի վրա երբ այս տեղն Հուսային Ամերիկայեն հայ գիներ հայ աղջիկներ քացին մինչև Գիլիգիա ինչ է պատմական հայաստան եւ եվրոպայեն օդար գիներ քացին գիլիգիա պատմական հայաստան ինչ է հալեպ ինչ է լիբանա որովհետեւ գարենան մեր որբերը բահել եւ պահպանել անոնց մեգը մարիա ջակոբսոններ մյուսը քարեն եւ պեներ որոնք իրենց արյան մեջ հայությունը ապրեցան հայացան հայ եղան եւ ուզեցին որ հայոց քրգին մեջ թաղվին ոչ թե իրենց քերեզմաններու մեջ հայոց քրգին մեջ հայ բաժանանի մեջ իրենց շինած բաժանաններու մեջ անոր համար ալ սերի Իսաբել Բարսիկ Կադաշ հուսան որ ասիգա սկիս կլա որբեսի ամեն անգամ նոր մտասերերումներով նոր աշխատանքներ ցերնարես եւ ըստ այն երկիր որ ազգը հայրենիքը մեր պատմությունը 
միշտ երախտաբարդում են դունակ ես։ Ամեն կրող վստահ պիտել լա, որ թերևս իր ողջության գրնաչ կնհատվիլ, բայց ամեն կրող վստահ պիտել լա, որ իր կրածը բիդի չը ծնդի, բիդի մնա, որբես մշտագան վգայություն։ Անոր համարալ նախ կշնորավորենք ես, կշնորավորեն մանավան ստեսին, մենք կհավադանք, որ միշտ ամեն ուժեր էրիկ մարդույ է դին հսորգի մգա, իզաբելինցը տաղպեր է, իզաբելին եդև հսոր մարդ մգա, որ ման ու իպես կկուր կուրա իզաբելին, եպե մնութի դեմ իրենց կսեն � շնորակալ եմ իստեսին։ Եվ վստահ եմ, որ եթե իսաբելին ծնողները մեծ հայրը մեծ մայրը ողջ լային, արյու անուստեն դինք ուտայմ սեինք։ Այվ, յուշուվ։ Կանի դարի եմ հայուպես այս։ 28 դարի մետք է բաշվաց � ողջ լային, կեզի մեկ պամի դես է ինի, աստված որնեք ես։ Եվ այսօր ես վստայեմ, որ երկինք եմ, իրենք այդ որդնությունը բլասինգը կեզի կուդան, as a grace of God, աստված այն շնոք, որ թուն գրծար իզաբերին գողկին լլալ, և իլույս ընձայ է, հրադարագ է, հետ է բապար, ավիս, հիմա, ես այս այդով ուզեմ հատուկ գեվով կնանդել մեր սիրերի սոնան, որ այն կան կերեցի գերվով շատ թասավորված, սովորագային դարպեր ծևով ներ� Հիրքեր ուղոն են, ես մի այն 25 կատ կրցապեր էլ հետս երբ շատ պիոր։ Անոնք որոնք չհասնին ունենալու, թո ու մեր աղջկներուն ասեն իրենց անունները դան, ես մեկ երբ շապատեն ետ պիտ երտան բերութ, իրենց կպեր եմ տարձյալ շնոնակալություն այդնել մեր Քրիստոնայկան թաստերակության աղջիքներում, որոնք շատ կերեցիք հայդակիրմը պատրաստած էլ։ Ես ոչ չեի, եվ կիչ մը մտահոք էի, աբրիք աղջիքներ այս հայդակի պատրաստության Հանկամ գնային, շնանկայություն նաև Սակոքեսի ավիստրաս, կալանկամ ավիրի լավի մի պատրաստես, բայց ու կրությանդ մեջ ավոր պամը սիրասի էր բիլի գիններում, չմը կարձեցի, որ անվլիա մեծ ձեր ես, լեիդի ես կժիշկ, անոնք լան ճարդարաբետ, անոնք լան խոհարար, անոնք լան բարձ մայս, անոնք լան բարձ դանդիգին, անոնք մեր լեիդիներն են։ Եվ այս գիշեր ես ձեր պոլորի, պոլոր լեիդիներվուտ, պոլոր գիներվուտ իմ հար� ձնի և ձեր մայրերութ ներկայրկունը մեր ժողորդեն ամբակասը։ Ասված ողնեցեզ, ասված բայեցեզ և գուղսան Քորիսավել հաչոտ հրադարագությունն ալ միասին գվայլենք և միասին կմպոշվենք։ Ասված ողնեց էր� Հետո ինչ է ձրակիվիս, Սարկիս։ Կինեցոն։ Կինեցոն միրելի։ Շատ ավեք։
And now I would like to invite Archimandrit Nevni Parikyan, Very Reverend Archpriest Gomidas Panosyan, Chairman of the St. Mary Armenian Apostolic Church Board of Trustees, Mr. Krikor Shitilyan, Dr. Kapia Churchill, Dr. Sarkisyan, to present the book, Sisters of Mercy and Survival to Life, in the way of the Armenian tradition, washing the book with wine. <laughs> 